Superhero films have a history of pitting characters with identical superpowers against one another. From web slinging, to mech suits, to super serum, these heroes are frequently confronted with dark mirror images of themselves, distinguishable only by their differences in morality and costume colour. The prevalence of this technique owes to several reasons. Aside from ensuring that any two opponents will be evenly matched, it's also a great way to depict the villain as a foil for the hero, placing the focus not on their abilities, but on the contrasting ways in which they use them. With great power. If you say with great power comes great responsibility, I swear I'll throw up on you. In his 2015 review of Ant-Man, however, Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin criticised this cliché, writing, I am tired of this Marvel movie trope where the bad guy has the same powers as the hero. I want more films where the hero and villain have wildly different powers. That makes the action much more interesting. While many of the more recent Marvel showdowns put to screen have moved away from this trope, none exemplify the merits of Martin's argument quite so elegantly as the mid-season climax of Daredevil's third Netflix outing. Instead of reducing the psychopathic bullseye to an evil replica of the hero, Season 3, Episode 6's office-based brawl chooses to embrace the asymmetry between its character's superpowers, even using it as the basis for the fight's thrilling, back-and-forth structure. The pair's differing superpowers are emphasised even in the moments preceding the battle. During his killing spree at the New York Bulletin building, Bullseye, masquerading as Daredevil, hurls a metal baton at Foggy Nelson, demonstrating the extreme force and accuracy with which he can turn any object into a lethal projectile. Before the baton can hit its target, however, the real Daredevil uses his heightened senses to catch it mid-flight. This exchange not only showcases the pair's respective abilities, but it also gives a preview of how these will play off each other throughout the coming conflict. Who are you? I'm Daredevil. At first, the fight is typical Daredevil. Visceral, close-quarters combat amplified by a frenetic score from composer John Pesano. However, despite having been built up as a formidable opponent throughout this season, Bullseye looks to be surprisingly outmatched here, with Daredevil visibly proving the superior martial artist. In a breakdown of this scene for IGN, lead actor Charlie Cox explains the thought process behind this choreography. We were able to talk about what fighting styles both of these characters enjoy the most and how do they try to manipulate the fight to kind of use it to their advantage. So in this case, Ben Poindexter is trying to do is create distance because that's where he's most lethal with objects. Because these characters possess wildly different skill sets, they each thrive in their own contrasting environments. And this adds a level of strategic depth to their encounter that's absent from a lot of other superhero fights. Daredevil clearly has the advantage at short range, but once Bullseye manages to open up some distance with a well-aimed ricochet of his baton, the tables turn in his favour, and this sudden reversal of power dynamics propels the clash into its suspenseful second act. This transition is signalled by an interesting tonal shift towards something out of a horror film. The music subsides, and we now witness the hero scrambling for cover as Bullseye pelts him with office supplies, displaying more of a knack for weaponising stationery than John Wick and Heath Ledger's Joker combined. What was previously just an office now becomes a labyrinth, as Daredevil cowers behind partition walls, occasionally making a false move and finding himself struck by a pencil or a pair of scissors. The situation might border on slapstick if not for the genuine sense of the threat posed by the villain, as he prowls around in the background of the shot, toying with his prey. By this point, the structure of this scene has started to resemble the Hegelian dialectic of thesis, antithesis and synthesis that writer John York identifies as the foundation of the three-act structure. Act 1 showed us Daredevil's strategy, Act 2 countered with Bullseye's opposing strategy. Now Act 3 must resolve the tension through a unification of the two. This final phase begins when Daredevil closes the gap once more, distracting Bullseye's inferior senses by flinging a storage box in one direction while attacking from the other. From here, the fight jumps between long range and short range as both characters attempt to act out their opposing strategies. This time, however, the audience's cerebral engagement is deeper because the question is no longer simply who will hit the other guy harder, but rather, will Daredevil be able to get close enough to defeat Bullseye without receiving a sharpie through his skull? For a moment, it seems like he might, until at the last second, Bullseye adapts to short-range combat, beating Daredevil at his own game. While there are obvious reasons behind the popularity of the evil counterpart trope, Daredevil's first confrontation with Bullseye perfectly demonstrates the advantages of a more asymmetrical approach towards superpowers. While the fight itself only lasts around three minutes, its use of a clear three-act structure makes it feel like an epic battle, as the scales tip in each character's favour and back again. Between the surprising tonal shifts and the added strategic depth, 
the use of different powers here allows for some great comic book action, and I hope that we'll see more superhero showdowns daring to go this route in future. The guilt means your work is not yet finished. <laughs>